Hello, today I'm going to finally get on with my Toucan t-shirts. If you like this video and would like to see more, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so the story is that every so often I meet up with one of my friends who um, doesn't live in the UK anymore, but she comes back every so often and we meet at a midpoint between our two locations. I think it was in 2018, it was a really hot summer here in the UK. Um, yeah, it was just really hot and there was a Lido and we thought, yeah, let's go swimming. We didn't have any stuff for swimming, so we grabbed a swimsuit from Primark and a towel, which obviously isn't the best idea and not the most sustainable idea. Anyway, we did try them on in the fitting room with the idea that we can then keep these items. They were fine in the changing room, but obviously when you then get, we got into the Lido and it just, we just found they weren't that appropriate. Yeah, it's just the way it's cut isn't great, yeah, it's not one that I've ever worn again to swim in my local pool. Today's video, I am going to just show you the part where I attach this to a t-shirt. So I'm going to make the t-shirt from scratch because I don't have many plain tops anyway. I've got a bit, I had a bit of remnant fabric which I could make a t-shirt from and I thought I'd try a new pattern as well. The pattern I'm using for this is from A Beginner's Guide to Sewing with Knitted Fabrics by Wendy Ward. So here is the book here. And I'm going to make the peak t-shirt from it. So the peak t-shirt is quite a nice, simple, fairly high rise. It's got a neckband. I'm doing the short sleeve version. I've already cut it out in advance. So um, to add the toucan, I will need to use the front piece. So here is my front pattern piece, all ready to go. And here is the swimsuit. So as you can see, it's a very jazzy sequined toucan on there. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut roughly round the toucan because I figure that I can then attach it to the front piece. There are two layers, so I'm just going to pinch the back layer away because I don't want to cut into that one yet. Okay, so next I think I'm going to add some underweb to the back just because I'm not sure how well it really works with knit fabric and that's the main thing that's been putting me off actually making this top but I think if I can get it to roughly stick and it just attaches to start with hopefully then it should be okay. Okay, so to attach the bondo web to the first side, I'm going to still put it up to um, a set, well, it's setting two on my iron, but hopefully that will work. And I'm also going to protect it with a bit of fabric over the top. Hopefully that this will mean it won't damage or burn the fabric. Okay, so it seems to have stuck on okay, I think. Um, but overall, I'm quite surprised at how well it has stuck on. I think now I'm going to trim the edges so that there's not quite so much blue around it. I guess I could have just done actually um, an oval shape on it. So if you are doing this yourself, think about that before you cut it out. But I think I'm just going to have to live with it now and um, do a very close, <laughs> close zigzag around all the corners. Okay, so I've now got my toucan all cut out ready. I now need to position it, which is probably one of the trickier parts. So actually it might help if I pin the front and the back pieces together first. I'm just going to line up the shoulder seams with the dress I'm currently wearing. And I'm going to roughly work out where to place it on my top. So I guess to be a bit more accurate you could pin the sides of your top as well. I'm just going to go to a mirror and pin that one. Actually, before I do that, I am going to remove the paper backing. Okay, so I've decided on the rough placement of the top, so I just um, went in front of a mirror, placed it roughly and then put a pin at the top and the bottom just to get a a rough idea of where to put it. I'm now going to do a couple of quick measurements actually just in case it is really going off to one side or not. Hey okay, I'm pretty happy with my placement actually. I'm not going to adjust it at all. And now I'm going to carefully press it on. I think I'm going to do it from the reverse side. I don't want to tarnish or melt the sequins. So as you can see I've left the pins in which isn't ideal but I 
just don't want it to move. And I'm going to put my bit of protecting fabric over the top. Let's have a look at the progress. So actually it's not that bad at all. Most of it has attached. Okay, so I've attached it. You could probably get away with doing a straight stitch on this because this toucan is so solid that I don't think the fabric would be able to stretch there anyway, but I'm not sure I want to risk it. I might do a really small zigzag round and see what that looks like. I've got a ballpoint needle in because they're knit fabrics. I'm just going to really take my time on this. Um, because also I don't know, I could damage my needle if I do hit a sequin. So, let's see. Okay, so I'm not really liking the effect. It just looks a bit very, just, stuck on toucan. Which obviously it is, but... You know, I might wing it with a straight stitch. I'm going to test it on a different section of the bed. And I might end up unpicking what I've just done. If it works, okay. Okay, so I'm much preferring how it's turning out with the straight stitch. And to be honest, I think the stitches popping won't be an issue because of the hard backing that the toucan's on. So I'm now going to unpick the bit of zigzag I did do. I'm going to stitch all the way across and then I'm going to really carefully trim away the excess blue border. Okay, so now that I've gone all the way around in a straight stitch, I've had a bit of a play around tugging it, but I don't think it's going to pop any of the stitches. So I'm really happy with that. It's a lot easier to do straight stitch. So the way I'm going to trim it is using these duckbill scissors. And you gotta be really careful you don't cut your thread or the fabrics. So the odd bit's still a bit caught by the um, bondo web, but it, it's peeling away really easily. I think most people who've used bondo web knows it doesn't stay stuck forever. Okay, so I've got the toucan on the front of the t-shirt. So I'm now gonna get on and stitch the rest of the top out. I do think it is worth um, attaching, if you can, your embellishment or if you do want to see something like this on the front doing it at the start when all your pieces are flat you could do it after you've joined the shoulder seams i guess that would um, be too inconvenient but it just um makes it a lot easier for you to just go around the shape okay so i just thought i'd show you the final result so as you can see it's attached to the t-shirt nicely I've left a really thin border here though, I guess of course you could make a wider border if you wanted. I think it's worked really well with this particular pattern because it's a nice plain basic t-shirt. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend the pattern for embellishing and making it a bit more individual. But yeah, I'm, overall I'm really happy with it. So just to recap on what worked best for me in this particular situation, although obviously it does depend on your embellishment. Because it was backed on a really solid non-moving backing. It did mean that I could do a straight stitch all the way around and it turned out to look the best. Obviously if you do have an embellishment that stretches like the fabric you may want to put it on a backing to make it solid. I did find on this one that the zigzag stitch didn't look brilliant and I'm really relieved that straight stitch worked because otherwise I don't think I would have worn it. Because the original swimsuit was in a knit fabric as well I was able to just leave a raw edge around the embellishment which was really handy, so I've cut really close with those duckbill scissors and I think it's come out really well. I don't really need to worry about it fraying because knit fabrics traditionally don't fray. And finally, I think if you are positioning an embellishment on a top like this, it is worth either pinning or tacking all of your seams, including the side seams, because I think you'll just get a much more accurate idea of the final position of your embellishment on the front. Okay, so that's it for this week. Thanks as always for watching. Next week I'll be back with a pattern review of this peak t-shirt by Wendy Ward, so I'll see you then.